In some documentaries and some media covered events about finance, one could see how some journalists find it uncommon to deal with derivatives. They would find it weird, for example, for commodities that are not yet at disposal to be sold in the future through a derivative contract. Actually, derivatives are not new. Going through the history of mankind, one could find examples of early derivative contracts that were agreed upon by merchants. So here is to the unprofessional journalists and here is to the incautious, media-hungry chums out there. Before getting to it, we should first recall the definition we gave of a financial derivative in the last video. This definition states that a derivative is a financial product whose value depends on an underlying asset, which actually means that a derivative is a contract that gives either rights or duties and whose value either increases or decreases through time depending on the underlying price. Around 1792 BC, Hammurabi ruled over Babylon. During his reign, he has enacted what is known as the Code of Hammurabi. This code contains a set of rules that regulated the life of Babylonian people. The 48th law of the code states the following. If anyone owe a debt for a loan and the storm prostrates the grain, or the harvest fail, or the grain does not grow for lack of water, in that year he need not give his creditor any grain, he washes his dead tablet in water and pays no rent for the year. This would actually mean in one sentence that in case of a bad harvest, the interest that has to be paid during that year is excused. If we write that down, taking K as the amount that has to be paid and ST as the value of the crops at disposal, at the end of the year, then the rule can be put this way. If the value that has to be paid is higher than what the farmer has, then the difference which is K minus ST doesn't have to be paid, which can be considered as the payoff in that case. On the other hand, if ST is strictly higher than K, then the entire value is paid and the payoff is zero, which means that the whole situation translates into a standard put option. Archaeologists also found contracts from that time in which one part agrees to sell an amount of a commodity, such as grains, at a future date and at a predetermined price, which would translate into today's financial jargon to a forward contract. In his article named Politics, Aristotle reported that Thales of Miletus, a famous philosopher and mathematician who lived during the 6th century BC, has predicted once during winter time that the olive harvest would be larger than what people thought. Armed with this conviction, he managed to negotiate with olive press owners to sign an agreement that would give him the right but not the obligation to hire all the olive presses at a defined price in exchange for a premium. Come harvest time, as his prediction was right, Thales exercised his right and managed to rent the olive presses at a substantially higher price which made him a lot of money. The agreement Thales made is exactly what is known now as a call option. During the Roman era, forward contracts were allowed as a tool to maintain the supply of commodities related to food. These contracts were regulated by the Roman law and were agreed upon in the commodity markets that were organized by the Romans. During the Middle Ages, commercial partnerships in the image of forward contracts were used to facilitate the import of goods. A great example of that would be the Italian commendas in which one party delivers money in exchange for goods that would be delivered in the future. The modern futures contract, as we know it now, was developed in the US by the Chicago Board of Trade. The latter is an exchange that was founded in 1848 and whose initial goal was to bring the farmers and the merchants together in an attempt to standardize the quantities and qualities of the grains traded. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange, which was founded in 1919, started also dealing with futures contracts right away. The first standardized options started trading in the Chicago Board Options Exchange in 1973 and then evolved into taking more stocks as underlying products as well as giving the right to sell the underlying in what would be known as a put option in 1977. Derivative products are not new. The need of a constant flow of commodities as well as the reduction of risk pushed rulers throughout history to create or allow these kinds of contracts. So next time you see someone who cannot wrap his mind around the fact of selling or buying a commodity that is still in the ground or that has not been harvested yet, Send him the link of this video. By doing that, you would have enlightened the lost being and you would have done your good deed of the day.